it's time to go full meta and review the most self-aware McFarlane toys figure ever. Todd McFarlane. What else would you have expected from the man himself turning 30 years old? No, not him. Trust me. This is not the face of a 30 year old. No, the company itself, McFarlane Toys, from its inception in 1994 when they were doing some of the very preliminary McFarlane figures with Spawn, some of the sports statues, etc. And then finally with the acquisition of the DC license back in 2020-ish or so, there's definitely been an influence there. And to commemorate the milestone of 30 years in the business, McFarlane decided to make a figure of himself. Now, I will admit there was a little bit of disappointment coming from me after learning that this was going to be part of a two-pack with the first sketch, Spawn, that he actually drew up back in the 1970s. And yeah, it's a very commemorative way to, like I said, harken back to where he started to sketch out things and kind of taking things back to his comic book sketch roots. But at the same time, there was, there's a part of me that kind of hopes that this would have been a standalone release. So if you ever wanted to get a Todd McFarlane figure of himself, you either have to go to some form of custom or you're going to have to go for this two pack, which retails at about 50 bucks. And it's very hard to get on top of that. It's also very hard to get through because it comes in that bubble packaging that I personally do not like. I'm sorry. I know that that's probably a hot take. I'm in the minority, but I never really liked the, those forms of bubble packaging. I prefer the box ones that the DC Multiverse brand comes in as opposed to the ones that I have to literally cut through with a knife or a letter opener or anything or scissors or anything like that. Because it ends up damaging the packaging by default. You literally have to damage and cut through it, which is a shame because I really uh, admire the commemorative 30th anniversary uh, aesthetic details to the packaging like the gold trimming and the label of the 30 year anniversary on the corners there and then the biography on the b back with uh, portraits of Todd McFarlane himself and his description of that early 70s sketch of Spawn that is very much influenced by Spider-Man if you can already tell and if you're wondering if I'm ever going to cover that figure he has been covered in a short so go and check that out it's actually up on the channel this video is going to be solely dedicated to the Todd father himself. And fit to be 7 inches tall like all McFarlane Toys figures. You see right here that he is mostly, actually I don't think I even want to say mostly, I want to say about half of an original figure, specifically the very McFarlaneisms of what he tends to wear, especially back in the early days, especially when he was doing conventions and things like that, just a straightforward jeans, pants with the t-shirt and the Spawn logo there on his chest, as well as a Spawn hat, and then of course, that Todd McFarlane head sculpt. Outside of that, I believe, I don't know for certain, but I feel like some of these things, some of these assets are taken from some other figures, just recoded and retrofitted to fit Todd McFarlane. I don't know about the shirt or even any of the limbs proportion wise, but I think I read somewhere that the pants are lifted from a Constantine figure. I believe it's that page punchers Constantine. Just, you know, they, they managed to cover it up with a trench coat on that figure. But they simply just took that guy and just painted it blue or a very dark navy blue for this guy over here. Outside of that, it just looks like they pretty much made him to look like he does traditionally when he goes to conventions. I do think that it looks a little awkward where it's tucked. It looks like the abdomen has a few proportion issues when it comes to where the belt is at and how it's kind of scrunched up right there. I don't know. There's just something about this area right here. And then when you kind of look back, it looks like the pants are a little bit on the saggy side. So this is probably the few areas where I do think that maybe they could have extrapolated on a brand new sculpt instead of lifting from that Constantine, but because maybe it works over there, especially since you're covering it up with a trench coat, whereas here, exposed, it just looks a little awkward, especially if you're going for that tucked-in shirt look that Todd often likes to go for. Outside of that, though, you got these loafers that look pretty nice with the matted black paint. And then we get up to the t-shirt that I sincerely thought was defective on my end because I saw these like little perforations on the spawn symbol, which is nicely painted there on the chest. But I saw those little like black dots and I thought to myself, okay, do I have a QC issue on the paint app for the spawn logo on the t-shirt? And it turns out that that's actually an effect they tried to do to kind of emulate those t-shirts that have 
it, it kind of like the artwork imprinted into the fabric itself. Kind of like those, I don't know what they're called. They're like these graphic tees. There's a specific word for them. But basically, you have the art actually inside of the knitting of the shirt. And I love those shirts. They're very comfortable to wear. It doesn't feel like something's just kind of plastered on your chest, especially when it's hot outside. It doesn't feel like it's just grafting and sticking to your chest. I love those shirts. And essentially, that's the effect that they try to do with this t-shirt. It's just it didn't translate well. The, the The concept is nice and novel. The execution, I feel, could have been done a little better because right out of the box, or at least from when he was inside the box and I kind of took him out of my Amazon package, I looked at it and said, is my thing defective? Oh, no, am I going to have to like do an exchange or something like that? And then upon further investigation, turns out that that's actually intentional. So I, I appreciate what they were trying to go for there, but it could have been executed a little better. Same thing I would say for the arms. Is it just me or do they look just a smidge lanky? I understand that Todd is supposed to be a thin, tall guy, but there's something about the forearms that just go a little too low to the point where they look a little freaky, especially when you extend the arms over to the sides and you see exactly just how much length he's got going on those forearms compared to the biceps and even the... Ch I would argue that even his forearms are as big as his chest. And I don't know how anatomical that is. But then again, that's coming from the guy who wants 360 degrees of rotation on the on the arms. Gee, I guess I should uh, probably shut up now. But as questionable as those forearms are, there's no questioning who is on that mug. That is Todd McFarlane. A little caricature-ish as the majority of McFarlane toys figures based on real people are. I mean, just look at the recent Dune series, the Dune figures, as well as every time that they try to do the Dark Knight trilogy because those are lifted from a live-action film. So anytime they do a live-action film, there's always this level of cartoonery to the face sculpts that's just a, a little strange the comic book stuff and the animated stuff is always for the most part top notch once they get into live action it looks like there's always something that they kind of just can't quite right so they go in the opposite direction of making things a little cartoony with the expressions and Todd McFarlane is not exactly abstained from that. And you can tell right there that even though it is emulating the Todd McFarlaneisms of the lips or the lack thereof, and then the eyebrows and the eyes, it still looks like I said, like a caricature, like somebody drew him up in a comic. And maybe, you know, there's no right or wrong answer for that sort of direction. Maybe exactly that's the aesthetic that they were trying to go for. And I appreciate that. Then you got the hat right on top right there with the Spawn logo. And overall, he's looking pretty nice. The only thing that is a little annoying would have to be this lanyard around his neck. I understand that I could practically just pop off the head and remove it. But I just don't really want to risk damaging the figure just yet. I just wish that this thing was just a, maybe a little bit close on the loop to be able to have it kind of tug or at least snug itself a little tighter around the neck area because every time I try to move the figure around or pose it, this lanyard does kind of get in the way and just bounces all over the place. You can see right there that even by just moving the figure about this lanyard, like in real life, I've never been a huge fan of lanyards. I just, every time either it be for a convention or some kind of event and they say, oh, here's your badge, it's attached to a lanyard, you have to carry it at all times, it's annoying. And it looks like they managed to translate that real life annoyance into figure form with this convention lanyard that he's got going on right here. And there's nothing to really write home about it in, in terms of like paint decals, it's pretty straightforward. You even have some decals on the badge itself that looks like they were trying to go for something there, but it's pretty empty. So it's just there to kind of sell the image that he is speaking at a convention. But I just wish that it wasn't so annoying when it comes to posing the figure and it kind of getting in the way. Which is actually a really fun thing to do. It's posing and articulating this guy. Because McFarlane looks like one of the things that he probably put on the list of quote unquote demands. Even though it's his own company. Is to make sure that this guy has the smoothest, most comfortable, and most well endowed articulation level because the head is definitely able to rotate 360 very smoothly as well as being able to tilt very generously up and down and left to right and then the top arms my god come on McFarlane you can't be playing favorites here <laughs> you gotta set a a level of standards not just for yourself here but also with future Batman figures because these top arms not only can rotate 360, as I like them to be, but they're very smooth. You have some really great extension there on the hinge that's baked inside of the ball joint. And then 
you have this butterfly movement where you do have the washer be just a smidge loose, but you can definitely see that butterfly movement forwards and backs and even shrugging movement up and down and almost all the way around is super smooth. Not just on one uh, shoulder here, the left shoulder, but the right one as well. It's almost like he knew that he needed to make sure that those joints inside can move in all kinds of directions. And I'm, I'm very happy for you, Todd, but... We really would appreciate if we could see some more McFarlands, and maybe even outside of Batman, but other characters like Superman, etc., to have really great movement on the shoulders like so and not be fully restricted, whether it be with capes or accessories or anything that has to do with the outfit itself. Then we move on to biceps where it is a little stagnant because it's a horizontal cut via the T-shirt cut, or at least where the T-shirt and the bicep meet. And so he masked it inside of there so you can only really swivel in a very stagnant pose right about right there but it can rotate 360 degrees you do have of course the two joints right there at the elbows this does kind of beg the question as to at one point is McFarlane going to go full pinless because the pins there are just a smidge distracting so if Marvel Legends despite my complaints about them can do it I feel like the time is starting to get a little close that maybe just maybe McFarlane could kind of innovate on their figures to go a little bit more pinless, especially if they're going to be raising the prices for uh, certain digital reasons. But I digress. Then we get to the wrists that are having these joints that flush really well with the forearm to make it look as natural as possible, despite, like I said, my earlier complaint about the forearms being a little too elongated. And I feel like the the wrist joints, despite allowing the wrist to be able to rotate full 360, as well as being able to bend inwards and outwards via the cut in the middle of the joint, despite the joint itself looking pretty natural to the actual physiology of the wrist, it's kind of elongating the forearm. So that kind of lends to the nitpick that I was having. The mid torso cut allows him to rotate 360 degrees at that level, as well as being able to extend slightly towards the back and slightly crunch inwards, but it's not the most favorable one. There's quite a bit of restriction happening there, as well as pr practically almost nothing to the sides on the obliques there. But you do have the waist that allows a little bit more nudging from forward to back and side to side. But again, I feel like it could have been done a little better or executed a little bit better. And I can't help but feel like it has something to do with their methodology of having the t-shirt be tucked in. I feel like maybe if they went with an untucked kind of sculpting to the t-shirt, it would have looked a little better. But nonetheless, you can rotate at the waist as well. 360 is just a little bit on the tight end. <laughs> Get it? Tight end. Boo this man! The legs can flex forwards about that far, although the diaper piece does surprisingly get in the way a little bit, as well as extension towards the back, except the di diaper piece, quite the opposite, actually allows it to go a little further than your average McFarlane, albeit with a slight little gap there at the top leg. And then extension towards the sides can definitely happen, almost a full 180. This is probably the most... Uh, splits that McFarlane will ever do in his life. No signs of any swivels, but you do get the two knee joints that can fully bend all the way up like so. And then we get to the feet here, or the shoes, where you have the toesies, of course, fully able to bend almost all the way up at a 90 degree angle. But the reason for why I skipped ahead to the toesies and then come back to the ankles here is because you got your traditional ball joint that is admittedly a little restricted via the cuff of the pants like you often get with these kinds of pants right here where you can kind of nudge them up and down but they can't really fully bend the foot down like some other McFarlane's have been able to do recently especially with that ankle joint that I personally really really like but you can really rotate the foot almost all the way around granted at an incline level and when you pivot it inwards and outwards like so you'll notice that it feels rather loose it feels pretty um, pretty fly, if you will. And there's a specific reason for why these are some of the loosest ankles you're ever going to feel, but it's by design. It's not a fault. It's not a defect because that's when we get into the huge charismatic factor of this McFarlane figure in a way that, like I said, shows just a little bit of favoritism, but at the same time, it's truly where your money really goes for a figure like this. As you should, because I was already commenting on how basic the actual outfit and the actual body sculpting really is. It's your traditional humanoid body with t-shirt and pants. It's just the fact that it's got the Todd McFarlane head sculpt and the aesthetic of the outfit along with the Spawn logo on the chest that really sells it, at least initially. 
what you really get in terms of selling the imagery of this being Todd McFarlane has to be the abundance of accessories he comes with, which I had to kind of mess around with a little bit to get him into this neutral pose because by default, he's going to come with these two extra hands that are kind of extended and neutral in a sense. But then he's got other hand accessories that are just akin to his personality. Like they're never not going to be attributed to Todd McFarlane. You have a... What is this? The left fist? The left fist, which is also decorated with, I believe, his wedding ring. So all of his left hands are going to come with the wedding ring. Very profound and very emotionally attached and thematic. Appreciate it. You got the fist on the left. Then you have a what seems to be a holding hand on the right, specifically. So you do have those two other hands. But then you have a peace sign right hand, in case he ever wants to throw up the peace sign. And then on his left hand, you have this kind of indented hand that is specifically designed to hold a pen inside. So obviously, Todd McFarlane being the sketch artist, the comic book founder, etc. You know, he's a comic book artist. He's one of the most influential people of all time. It's no question that he was going to come with an extra hand accessory that is designed to hold a pen. Now, the pen itself, it's pretty straightforward. It's chrome painted. It's designed to look like a pen. It's a pen. But it is sculpted in a way to be able to be held inside of the hand and is technically removable. However, doing so will then kind of ruin the illusion because it does have this peg on the side of it. And the hand itself does have a hole so that it never loses sight of that pen. So you might as well leave it stuck in there. But a sketching hand with a pen wouldn't make sense if he didn't come with a sketch pad himself. He comes with this sketch pad accessory, which is pretty much a white piece of rubberized plastic. However, it's got indentations to mimic that little coil to kind of hold the pages together at the top. And then as you can see right there, sketched on the front of the pad itself is of course his first initial sketch from the 1970s i can't remember the specific year but it was back in the 70s where he first drew spawn when he was 16 years old so this was his initial sketch shrunken down to be put on the sketch pad accessory and of course you can use the holding hand or at least one of these extended hands to hold it in place and then swap the left hand for the sketching hand to make it look like he's either drawing it or he just finished drawing it etc so that's pretty cute that's pretty awesome nice ways to commemorate this initial uh, piece of McFarlane history and if that wasn't enough you can also use that holding hand to then grab hold of this microphone which is of course meant to emulate all of his many appearances at conventions, especially since he's already got the lanyard on his person, you might as well deck him out to make him look like he's addressing the audience. Ready to talk about the Spawn movie for like the 150th time <laughs> that's been in development for how many years now? But here's the thing, those aren't the kookiest accessories in my opinion. They're very personality driven and very fun to mess around with and swap and put them in a variety of poses with them, but... These are the ones that are just crazy. He comes with an extra set of barefoot feet. And this is why those ankle joints feel the way that they do in terms of looseness. Is because unlike some other McFarlane's, whether it be DC Multiverse or anything Spawn related, etc. He comes with actual swappable feet. And I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. But... I think this is the first time he's ever done swappable feet. And of course, he would save that for himself. <laughs> Bare feet. Now, I tried doing some research, and from what I can tell, I couldn't really find the origin of this in-joke to be able to allow him to be posed with swappable barefoot feet. I don't know if it's tied to some kind of running gag. I don't know if he's been at conventions where he likes to be bare feet, uh, barefoot on stage, which is incredibly unsanitary, or it, on a much more personal level, he likes to walk around his house barefoot. I don't know. I don't know, but the feet themselves are decently sculpted, and they're even articulated with the toesies, though being barefoot, it's going to come uh, uh, call attention to those pins inside of the joints themselves, which I would have appreciated if they were actually painted skin tone, so it, it kind of looks like he's being... <laughs> oh, my mind just went into a very dark place. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if that's offensive, but it really did look like he's being uh, nailed to to a cross or something but anyways as the internet likes to do with an awful lot of their heroes but you god damn <laughs>
But my point still stands that I really would have appreciated skin tone pins inside so that it looks a bit more natural, especially if you're going to be doing this. Granted, if you want to play devil's advocate, this is their first time, allegedly, of them doing barefoot feet. It just happens to be for Todd McFarlane for some reason. Now, if I was to put on a tinfoil hat and come up with a conspiracy theory, strictly a conspiracy theory, that's all it really is, just me taking a very educated shot in the dark here, it would be that maybe, just maybe, this is an in-joke to his partner in crime and co-image comics uh, creator and longtime colleague, Rob Leefield. <laughs> I want to say that this is a jab at Rob Leefield, creator of Deadpool and again, his co-founder of Image Comics and longtime buddy. Because if you guys know anything about comics and things like that, it would be that Rob Leefield is notorious for not being able to draw feet. So much so that even the recent Deadpool and Wolverine trailer made fun of him by having a shot in the trailer where Wolverine and Deadpool are walking in front of a building and the building has a sign that says, Leefield's just feet. Which is also a jab at the fact that Rob Leefield cannot draw feet. And that's why, after being criticized a number of times, most of his comic panels don't have have characters that basically kind of cover up their feet. Their feet are always covered up by something, or they're just kind of cut off from the frame. Like, the panel just ends right when their feet are about to be shown, and you just see, like, his, their shins up. So... That would be my theory as to what this is. This is Todd looking at Rob and be like, hey, look, I got feet. <laughs> I don't know. That's just my guess. But it wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't be surprising if maybe someone were to interview McFarlane and be like, hey, why the feet? Why the feet? Why are the barefoot feet thrown in here? But nevertheless, it adds to the personality. And this combined with all the accessories he comes with. Outside of even the Spawn sketch figure that he comes bundled in with and the accessories he, that guy comes with, there's so much personality and so much novelty happening with this guy that it was able to sell on me picking him up, even if he's not Batman related. This is Todd McFarlane, and whether you like him or you dislike him, love him or hate him, he's had an influence on not just comic books, obviously, but also the action figure game especially kind of sculpting out this place that he can work with when it comes to that specific 7-inch scale, this specific demographic, valuing articulation or valuing certain things that he's come to be known for, with whether it be within the DC multiverse or beyond. And what better way to kind of celebrate that than just making an action figure of yourself? How many of us have kind of wished at some point to be made into an action figure so that we can stand tall next to our favorite hero, whether it be Spider-Man, whether it be Batman, whether it be Spawn. And I feel like, for the most part, despite some retooling and reusage of some assets here and some questionable things as far as the lanyard, the lengthy of the forearms and the feet, this is pretty much the ultimate way to do it. And that, at least, gave me the incentive to give Todd McFarlane himself an 8 out of 10. Yes, I'm not going to be super biased and be like, oh my god, this is the most amazing fi figure ever. Because objectively, it's not. But there's enough novelty happening with the accessories to be able to swap them in and out and pose them so that I can film the B-roll in a very, very fun and creative way. And that was definitely enough for me. So are any of you picking up the two-pack that features Todd McFarlane and his earliest sketch of Spawn? Or are you guys going to pass it up for now because... If it's not Batman, or if it's not a badass looking Spawn, etc., it really doesn't tickle your fancy. I personally feel like I said, this is a really good way to commemorate the 30th anniversary. And is there enough kind of like charisma or fun novelty happening with the accessories to move you in that direction? Or are you wait waiting for a sale for or for him to become a little bit more readily available so you can easily walk into a, like a GameStop or whatever and pick him up? And what specific accessory would you guys want to be bundled with if you were to be made into an action figure yourself? Let me know down below and as always, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs down if you did not, and stay humble. I'll see you guys later.